Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, some of you may be wondering just what the hell am I doing up on my roof? Uh, well, it's uh, it's winter time here, as you can see. Got some snow on the ground. It dumped about a foot on us, and then it hasn't snowed again since then. And so, really, it's been a pretty mild winter. But uh, we got pretty good little cover of snow there. But the reason I'm up here on my roof is I have to get out here every once in a while, and uh, my panels are up here. Up on my porch roof, you can see my bank of panels up on here. There are about 580 watts of panels. And I have to get out here whenever it snows. I have to shimmy out that window right there. And I grab my broom and I push off all the snow off of my panels. Otherwise, I wouldn't get enough sunlight during the wintertime. Now, that's worked out fine. Uh, but the problem is, I'm not as young as I used to be. And uh, as my girlfriend says, what the hell are you doing on that roof, you old fool? Uh, so it's kind of gotten a little bit dangerous uh, for me uh, uh, to get out here on this roof in the wintertime and push off the snow. So I'm coming up with a better plan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you what I'm going to build here. And I'm going to take these, these panels off and I'm going to put them on a post-mounted system down on the ground. So it'll be easier to do the maintenance and able to uh, keep them clean off of the snow. And, and uh, my battery bank will be right next to them. So I'm going to show you that project, uh, and I, I won't build it until spring because the ground's too hard to dig in, but I can at least show you the project, and maybe you'll even have some suggestions, recommendations uh, for how I can do it and make it even better. So let's go look at that project for a post-mount uh, remote solar system. Okay, folks, so this is my design for a post-mount uh, remote solar power system. And uh, what I've done here is I've built this out of a 6x6 pressure-treated uh, exterior post and pressure treated 2x4s and the post is buried uh, which I rotate around here to show you the post is buried into cement so I would get probably a 8 foot long post and bury at least 3 feet of it in the ground in cement that should give you a nice stable foundation for it 2x4s pressure treated and you will see here that I used steel bracing I've got steel braces in all the corners, steel braces under this uh, tilt mount, which I'll explain, and on all corners. And basically what this is, is it's a 2x4 box here, connected to another 2x4 box that adds, acts as the frame for the solar panels. And I would glue and screw every one of these 2x4s and add in the steel corner braces, uh, so that that should be extremely strong, uh, won't... Uh, wiggle around and let your panels come loose in a high wind. Now I've got this set at 45 degree angles for summer sun in this or in winter for winter sun. Excuse me. In the winter time, the su the sun is at a lower angle, and so I want to get the maximum amount of sunlight on my panels. And so I've got this set to 45 degrees. That way, the sun that's coming down at this angle here, it will get the maximum amount of sunlight. Also, this will make it a whole lot easier in the winter time because I can stand here on the ground and I can just brush whatever snow doesn't come off of these. The snow should just fall right off. Uh, but I can also do any ice scraping or anything like that and I can get right behind it and do any maintenance on the wires on the panels. Uh, it should make that nice and convenient. Now I've got this tilt mount so that I can also tilt this to a horizontal. So I'm going to show you what it looks like tilted to a horizontal position. Okay, now I've got these panels tilted to a horizontal position for summer use. In the summer, the sunshine is a lot uh, higher. It's almost directly overhead. Now I want to get the maximum amount out of my panels, so by having them in this horizontal position, I'll get all of the sunlight uh, as it's passing over. Now I did not design this to, to swivel. It only tilts. It tilts from either 45 degree angles to this horizontal angle. Now I'm going to show you this tilt mount that I designed. What I use is this is just a 2x6 with the edges rounded off, and you can see it's got two holes in it here. When it's in this horizontal position, the bolt goes through uh, the, the uh, hole through the mount system, comes out, and this has lock washers and lock nuts on it. And you can see that, that this has steel braces in the corners, and then this would be glued and screwed. All this would all be glued and screwed. I think a 2x6 will be uh, plenty strong enough with these steel corner braces on it. So in the horizontal position, I just put the bolt through this hole here, and this holds this whole unit uh, in a horizontal position. When it's in the 45-degree unit, I just pull this bolt out, 
tilt this down to 45 and then this bolt here goes through the, the uh, hole in this mount here and goes through the post and is tightened down and holds it in a 45 degree position. Okay, pretty nifty little mount system there. I think that will be strong enough uh, to hold the framework even in a high wind. I don't think you'll have any problem with that uh, holding it there. But if you have a different suggestion for a mounting system, that would be good too. Or if you have a suggestion for making this tilt using a round pole, uh, that would also be nice if you could t uh, swivel this. But a tilt system will capture the majority of the sun, so that's what I'm after there. Now you can see the framework. I'll pull these panels off. Just hide them here. Now you will have to measure and cut this frame to fit your panels. All brand manufacturers make their panels different sizes, so I can't tell you exactly what the dimensions will be on this frame. You'll have to measure your panels, but you can see how it's put together. Basically it's a small 2x4 box with the tilt mount attached to a larger frame box with steel corner braces and I would glue and screw all of these 2x4 ends together. Uh, it should be nice and strong. And this will hold either two 12 volt panels or it'll hold two 24 volt panels. I'm thinking about going to a 24 volt system. Uh, if you put on two 250 watt 24 volt panels on here that gives you 500 watts of power. Okay? And that would be a good size for a base, uh, basic use of your cabin would usually use about 500 watts, so two 250 watt panels would be really nice for this system here. So now I'm going to show you, along with building this post mount, I also want to put my batteries as close to my panels as I can. And so I'm going to also build a, a remote power box, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I've got this rotated back up to 45 degrees, so you can see underneath it. And I want to show you, this is my remote power box I'm going to build. This is basically a plywood box, two foot by two foot by four foot long, uh, mounted with three uh, strap hinges and a lock on the front. You've got to have a lock on your box to keep the kids out of it and also to keep somebody from stealing your equipment. On the box, you can see that it has these vent holes. You've got to have vent holes in a battery box because batteries will off gas and you want that off gas to escape out of that box, otherwise it will corrode and it could become explosive. Battery gases can explode with a flame, so you want to make sure you have vents in the side of your box. And I'd recommend covering these with some screen. Uh, that'll keep insects from getting in there because they, wasps and that would like to build up a nest inside any box, especially where it's going to be kind of warm in there. Now the box sits right underneath the panels. And that's good because uh, the, this will protect the box. In the summer, uh, this will be shaded under here, and your batteries want to be cooler in summer. So this box will be shaded in the winter. The panels will protect it from snow, so there won't be much snow buildup on top of this box. Now I'm going to open this up and show you what it looks like inside. I'm going to click on the top and just hide it. Click on the front and hide it. And inside the box I've got eight deep cycle 6 volt batteries. And that would be used either for a 12 volt or 24 volt system, either one. Uh, I would probably go with the Trojan T105s, but any 6 volt deep cycle battery will work. And also I've got my power controller. I use an MPPT power controller. And I've got my inverter in this box. So I've got my entire remote battery system right here in this box. This is going to be nice because uh, wiring is really expensive. Copper wires went out of this world. It's very expensive. So by having my batteries real close to my solar panels, I can use very short wiring. I won't have to have a lot of wire. And the shorter the wires, the better, because DC wire or DC power is a lot like trying to push water through a hose. The shorter the distance, the better, because the longer the distance, the more heat you're going to have generated, and the loss of power you're going to have with longer wires. So having this remote battery system right next to the panels will reduce the amount of wire that I have to use, and will uh, reduce any loss from having a long run of wire. All I need then is a heavy-duty extension cord, and that's what that little hole is down there. You can see a heavy-duty extension cord will be run through some PVC over to my over to my cabin, and plugged into my inverter. And all of my power will just then run over to my cabin through that heavy-duty extension cord and over to my power strip in my cabin, while all my batteries, my power controller, and my inverter will be right here next to the panels. And I can come out here and open up the top of the box and uh, if I need to do maintenance on my batteries, if I need to add some distilled water to my batteries, I can just open that up, check my batteries, I can check my uh, power controller, 
and uh, work on any of the equipment inside of here. Now I plan on insulating this box with just some foam board insulation. Batteries and inverters and power controllers will all put off just a little bit of heat. In the summer you want your batteries cool and in the winter you want your batteries warm. So having an insulated box there will be just enough heat produced from the batteries and this equipment in here that it will keep these batteries nice and warm so that they will work better. Warm batteries hold more power and produce more power so that will keep my batteries nice and warm inside that box. Okay, that is the remote power system that I plan on using to take my uh, panels off my roof. You can go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Go up to the top and click on Project Plans. You can see pictures and you can also download the SketchUp file. Using SketchUp, you can modify this or look at anything you want. Just go up to where it says Edit on the file and then click on Hide and you can hide any of the features. So if you want to look at this at the 45 degree angle or you just want to look at the flat angle, just click on it, click hide, and you can hide any of these features so you can see it at any angle. You can also take the top off of the box, you can take the front off of the box, and that way you can see inside, see how everything is built uh, and constructed. And so just go download the SketchUp file, you'll need Google SketchUp to view it, but you can use that. And uh, if you have any comments, recommendations, things you would do different, uh, put it down there in my comments. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Solar Cabin. Click on subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this project, folks. If you have uh, suggestions for making it better, put it down there in the comments. Have a great day, everybody.